What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another movie review. I'm Chase Lee, reviewing for DallasMovieScreenings.com, and the movie I want to take a look at right now, and excitedly to do so, is The Fanatic. Now, this one comes from Quiver, and this one is directed by Fred Durst. Yes, that Fred Durst, and this is my first Fred Durst-directed experience. Um, and this one stars John Travolta as Moose. Yes, that is his name. And he is a humongous fan of this action star, played by Devin Sawa. And he starts, you know, uh, kind of going to his uh, signings or whatever. He wants to get a bunch of autographs. And, you know, he doesn't really get what he wants. And he tra- starts to track him down and go to his house. And it gets a little stark- stalkerish and, um, you know, uh, maybe even deadly. But I'm going to keep that uh, little little surprise up to you because uh, I-, I will not spoil this, uh, this greatness. So, um, <laughs> listen, going into this movie... Super skeptical, but there's an asterisk. Skeptical, skeptical in the sense that John Travolta, Nicolas Cage, and Bruce Willis are the holy trinity of doing stuff in like five days and pumping out like three movies a week. How is it done? I have no clue. But um, that's what they do. They just they make all these projects like super quickly throughout the year, and most of them are pretty bad. Some of them even so bad that they're good. So they could be uh, entertaining on that level. So, with this one, I really enjoyed the um, uh, the marketing, because the trailer was intriguing. I was like, John Travolta's in this terrible hairpiece, he looks like a completely different person, is he gonna, like, act, like, crazy and good, or, like, bad and crazy? Like, wh- where's he gonna go with this? So, like, just the the absolute surprise of his performance is what made me want to watch this pronto. And it was my first, uh, like I said, directed Fred, directed by Fred Durst movie. Um, and if you're thinking, yes, it is that Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit. So, uh, which is funny, and uh, I'll explain it a little bit later in the review. But um, okay, I will say this: it is a bad movie. I don't really care for it. I'm gonna rate it pretty low. But it was really entertaining to watch. And to be quite frank with you, some of the most fun I've had all year watching a movie. It's at a very swift 90 minutes. But let me tell you, John Travolta is a blast to watch. So, and you can take some of these things I say as sarcasm, but I'm just telling you my truth, okay? So, (laughs) I will just start, I'll start with Fred Durst. So I think as an actual like stalker movie or like a crime thriller, suspenseful movie, I think it's actually just bare minimum. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's bare minimum stuff. I think my issue with Fred Durst as a, a director on this film is one of its tone. I have no idea what this movie wants to be. Is is it a film that we're, we're supposed to be taken seriously? That is supposed to be like this serious thriller and we're, there's no no comedy in this whatsoever? Or is this a satire of fan culture? I have no idea what he was going for. And I say that to say this. Because the way he directed John Travolta is cartoonish. John Travolta in this movie is playing like a giant like man baby. Um, kind of, you know, just not really getting what he wants. Almost like Twitter. He's playing Twitter. And uh, to be quite frank with you, some of the people act at, like that on there. Um, but he's acting in such an over-the-top kind of cartoonish way. It makes me believe that it is an allegory for fan culture and how toxic it can be. Celebrity culture and how toxic it can be. It's It, it looks like on screen it is an over-the-top cartoonish allegory for that. But then in other scenes, he plays it so serious and so just like straight that you're like, I don't know what you're going for. So I think the confusion on that uh, really kind of brought it down a lot for me. Um, And a lot of interesting but very odd choices that I don't think make any sense for the movie overall. Uh, There's VO in this movie, voiceover, from one of Moose's friends, right? And... Why was it there? 
I mean, is it there to make it sound like it's a like a noir film? Like, ooh, it's spooky, it's eerie, it's a little mysterious. I don't really know, but it made no sense for me. It just was in there to be in there. There's a lot of there's some transitions there in this movie. They're interesting, but I don't really know if they work because they're like uh, I think they're oil paintings or they're um, uh, I, I I don't know what the type of art form it is, but there's paintings that happen in sh- certain transitions of moose's character and maybe the prediction of his character in the movie was it put there to be eerie suspenseful spooky i guess but once again are you going for satire are you going for serious i i I don't know it is confusing so those transitions in the uh the vo were very interesting and odd choices um and then also, on top of that, some of the story beats are just, they're idiotic. I, I mean, I'm going to call it what it is. Um, Moose's friend is the one that kind of propels him to go find his uh, his movie star. She gives him that, like, maps to the stars type of thing. And you're like, you know that your friend is a little obsessive. Why would you even egg him on like this? So there's stuff like that. That's literally the only, like, super idiotic thing that annoyed me. Everything else was just kind of like... Eh, whatever, I'm just going with the flow at this point. But, um, so yeah, that's really all I gotta say about Fred Durst, uh, directing on it. Oh, I guess one last thing. The ending is terrible. I hated the ending. Because it ends in such a way you're like, why, why are we being, why are we framing this person with this certain thing that didn't really even make a difference in the middle of the, it was so strange. I was like, why are we ending it here? Uh, so the, the ending is bad. Um, but I will say what made me crack a smile and even like chuckle like super hard is at the very end when it cut the black, it, cause the credits were in the front too. It said, John Travolta, fade out, fade in, is Moose, fade out. And then the credits start rolling. I'm like, yeah, I know. We just saw the movie. I didn't forget that he was Moose, but it was funny. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's all I gotta say about Fred Durst. Um, most of the acting is either subpar or bad. Uh, some of the line reads are really, really, really bad. Some of them, like I said, are passable, but you're here for John Travolta. You want to know how Travolta does? I'm here to tell you how Travolta does. So what's really strange. Well, okay. I'll say this first. He is committed. He is 125,000% committed to this role. Whatever it is, he is committing to it twofold. I don't know what he's trying to portray, but he's going for it. And I'll give him that. But a major issue with this character is that obviously there's something wrong. Whether it be autism, Tourette's, a mental disability or something. That is making his character act the way he is. Now, if I was in Devin Sawa's position, the actor that he's in the movie, if I were to see this person, I would not think of them as creepy or invasive. Like, yeah, he comes onto the property, but like when you talk to him, obviously you know that something is up with him. But yet, people still push this guy around, treat him like garbage, and it's like, I get it, you're going to push him to his limits and he's going to do some really illegal stuff, but obviously there's something up with him to where it just it made me feel uncomfortable when I would laugh at his performance because, yes, it was over-the-top and cartoonish, but there was something about it that made me just feel really uneasy because it didn't explain like what he had, so it just made it even worse as the movie went on. So that's... That's kind of my main issue with his character is that I don't, I don't really know him. And so it just makes it really hard for me to actually laugh at his really overcooked performance. But on one hand, since I don't know what he was portraying in the movie, I will say that he, uh, he was definitely over the top, like a lot. And it was uh, hilarious at some times. Like he, he has a lot of movements and a lot of twitches, you know, a lot of, kind of like just looking not even looking at people most of the time i don't even think he looks at one person the entire movie and he's just kind of like looking down at the ground and it's just uh 
it's really um, interesting type of directing on his character. So I just, uh, yeah, I guess my I guess my dogs are going crazy over uh, the performance. But uh, yeah, I, it's just one of those things to where I expected comedy because it was going to be over the top, but I felt bad while watching it and they didn't really explain. It's just, it's a very weird conundrum. Um, but I will say that it was still entertaining because he was so far out there from everyone else that he committed. So I'll give him that. Uh, Devin Sawa is cool, I guess. Um, I guess he'd be one of the better ones <laughs> out of the group. Um, yeah, I'll go and say that on record. He's the best one. So as a bare minimum crime thriller, I guess it's fine. I didn't really care for it just because I didn't think Durst really had a handle on what he wanted to tell. And then of course with tone management, some questionable choices, and then uh, directing that character. I just, there's a lot of variables that made me dip it down to a D, but I will give it a D plus because it was a, um, it was a treat to watch. I will just say that. And now the producers of this film will never send me a movie ever again. That's fine. That's fair. Um, it's, hey, it's fair. I'm, I'm trashing their movie. Um, the funny thing about uh, Fred Durst being in Limp Biscuit is that they play a Limp Biscuit song in the movie because it's free. It's cheap. It's, uh, you know, you don't have to pay for, uh, for rights. So props on Durst for uh, thinking outside of the box creatively on that because that's that's good. You're saving money. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, D plus for me on the fanatic, um, I'm, people are going to check it out. It doesn't matter what I say. People are going to check it out because it looks, the trailer looks over the top. You want to check it out. And I will say that, um, if you want to have a couple drinks with it, go for it. So, uh, that is my review of the fanatic. Uh, what'd you guys think of it? Or have you even heard of it? Comment that place right below my face and let me know. And as always, that will do it for this review guys. I'm Chase Lee and tune in next time for whatever I review next. I will see you guys later.